Today one is about using the pipeline in operator to write clean code in F sharp. And to really understand how the pipelining operator works, it's worth understanding or reviewing what extension methods are. And if we have a function like the one that you see there, or a method in C sharp, because it's in C sharp, that actually filters a list, you could see that we have the first argument that is the list and the second argument that is the condition. And the way that you use this is by passing, then in this case, list of numbers and the condition for filtering. But by converting this as an extension method, what you are doing basically is changing the way that you call that. And numbers now, instead of being on the right side, is on the left side of the box. And it, although it looks like an, a real method, it is not. It's an extension method. And what the compiler is doing for you is actually moving what is on the left side as the first argument of that method. And that allows you to write code like this, in which you could chain different codes. And if you return the list again, yet you, you could chain them in that way. So taking the same concept of the same uh, method in C sharp and converting that converting that to an F sharp function would look like this, in which the first argument, in this case, is going to be a, con a condition, and the second argument is going to be the list of items. You could see that we change the order, and you will see why in a minute. So how do you call a filter function in F sharp? by passing the condition, that is a lambda expression, and then the list. But using the pipelining operator, you could do it in this way. And what, what you are doing here is to take in the argument and put it on the left side of the pipelining operator, that is this guy here. And what the compiler is doing in this case is putting that at the end of the code. So it's passing what is on the left side of the pipelining operator as the last argument of the function invocation. So it's similar to the extension method, but the extension method will do it, will put that argument at the beginning, the pipeline operator will put it at the end. And that's why you need to swap the order and you could write code like this in which you could chain different functions. But what is even better in comparison with the extension method is that this works with any function. You don't need to convert the function to be static and put it in a static class. Every single uh, function will work with this. So this is the way that you tend to write link queue or link uh, queries in C sharp and this is a, the way that you will write the same type of code in F sharp by using the pipeline operator. So let's see an example so you could get a, an idea of more, a more realistic demo of how you could use this. Let's say you have a customer, and the customer could be either VIP or not the VIP. And we have a function here that is increase limit. For the ones that this is the first time you see a chart code, basically what is the first thing here is the name of the function, and what comes after is the argument or arguments that we have. And then we have the definition of the function. And this guy is asking if the customer is a VIP, we will increase the limit, the spending limit of the customer by a thousand. Yeah, that's why we return a new customer <coughs> whose limit is incremented by a thousand. If the customer is not a VIP, we will increase it by 300. So now let's say that we want to give the customer the opportunity to be promoted as a VIP depending the spendings of the, let's say, last month. So this second function receives a tuple with the customer and uh, his or her spendings, and we ask if the spendings were more than a thousand, then we will, we will promote the customer to be, to be VIP, otherwise we won't. And the third and last function that I need for this exercise is a function that will actually calculate the spendings and will return, we don't care how we do it, but will return, and this is what we return always is the last line, a tuple with the customer and its spendings. 
So now that we have how to, how much the customer has spent, the, the possibility of promoting the, the customer to be VIP uh, and to increase the limit, we could call these three functions in this way. And this is the way that you would do it in C sharp. Yes. You call calculate the spendings with the customer, you get the tuple with the customer and its spendings. Then you call try to promote to VIP with that tuple that we get from there. And then we get a potentially promoted customer. And the last thing that we do here is to increase the customer of this potentially promoted customer. And we will get a customer that now has uh, the limit increased. Another way in which you could write this is using the pipelining operator and swapping the order. Because what is this is doing now is the customer is going to be sent as the last argument. And the same thing with this one. And we will look like this. But we change. Now is the customer, the one that is sent to this function. And if you pay attention to this, this specific argument is actually what we need as an input for this function. And what we return from this function is actually what we need as an input for this other function. So a better way to write the same code would be like this, in which the customer goes through all these things and different outputs are going to be the input of the next function. And you could see that in this way, it's much cleaner and it's easier to understand and easier to, to read. So that's basically the tip for this month is using pipeline operators to be able to be more declarative and write cleaner code in a shop.